Hello friends, today we're going to look at the most common mistakes made by 3D visualizers. For experienced artists, these might seem obvious, but beginners often make such errors in their work. Thoughtful, this will definitely be useful for everyone to double-check their projects. Let's go through the most frequent ones together. The first mistake is incorrect wood grain direction on objects. For example, let's take a dining tabletop. I'll model it from scratch. Let's set the dimensions to 1800 by 900 millimeters. We apply a wood material. It looks something like this. Then we add a UVW map modifier and choose the box type with dimensions of 1000 by 1000 millimeters. In the preview, we can see that the texture is incorrectly oriented. So, we choose projection along the x-axis. Notice that the wood grain should run along the longer side of the object. Now the texture is correctly aligned along all three axes, but that's not always the case. If one side is still incorrect, we enable angle snap and choose gizmo in the modifier. We manually rotate it by 90 degrees. Now you can see in the preview how the texture can be misaligned. Always pay attention to this. Another case is when kitchen facades have vertically oriented wood grain, but on horizontal drawers, artists often rotate the grain horizontally. This is not entirely correct, as the texture direction on facades should be consistent. Notice also that on side parts, the wood grain should go along the longer side. If we have a situation where the model is all attached, but we need to adjust the mapping on a specific part, we apply an Edit Poly modifier on top, select the element, and add a new UVW map. We can see the mapping is wrong, so we change the axis. This is how it should look. The second common mistake when modeling furniture, especially cabinets, is the lack of proper smoothing on the facades. This causes the surface to appear deformed. There's a slight but noticeable curvature that becomes especially visible under lighting or in close-up shots. Such a defect can ruin even a high-quality render, as it creates the impression that the facade is puffed up or warped instead of being flat and smooth. To show this problem clearly, I'll model a simple cabinet with facades and add chamfers using the chamfer modifier. This is often where the issue arises. If you don't enable smoothing, smooth chamfer edges, when setting up the chamfer, the polygons after the bevel remain with sharp normals and the surface loses its continuity. Light spreads incorrectly across it and distortions appear. There are two simple ways to solve this. Enable smoothing in the chamfer settings. This allows the software to automatically generate proper normal transitions between the new edges, so the planes blend smoothly without breaks. Add a smooth modifier after the chamfer. This additionally helps smooth out the entire geometry if something went wrong at the previous stage. It's very important to understand that even small modeling inaccuracies can strongly affect the overall perception of an object. This is especially critical in 3D furniture visualization, where the viewer's attention is focused on the materials, lighting, and geometry quality. So always check if your chamfers and smoothing are set up correctly before moving on to texturing and final rendering. The third common mistake concerns the background seen through the window, which critically influences the perception of the interior. In many cases, the view from the window is a decisive factor when choosing an apartment, so it directly impacts the emotional impression of the visualization and its commercial appeal. Ignoring this aspect can lower the quality of the presentation, even if the interior is well modeled. The most common problem lies in the incorrect placement of the horizon line or overly low exposure of the image outside the window. This makes the background appear dark, unnatural, and poorly matched with the lighting inside the room. Another frequent mistake is using a low-resolution or overly blurred image. 
It's important to remember that during the day, exterior lighting is typically the brightest light source in the scene. When we look at real interior photographs, the background outside the window is never too dark or too high in contrast. On the contrary, distant objects tend to have a lighter, softer tone due to atmospheric perspective. If objects are far away, they will appear lighter and less saturated. If vegetation or buildings are close to the window, they may appear more contrasted, but they should never draw too much attention. If you're using an HDRI or an image on a plane, it's important to increase the output amount so the background has enough brightness and matches the overall lighting balance of the scene. Pay attention to the blur value. If it's too high, the image becomes mushy and lacks depth. Lowering the blur value makes the background look sharper, more realistic, and natural. Additionally, adjust the saturation. If the background is too colorful or the greenery is overly vibrant, reduce the saturation or slightly tone down the gamma. This helps create a soft, natural backdrop that doesn't distract from the interior. If your scene has bright daylight, then the background should also be bright and convincingly reflect the mood of the shot. Overall, the background behind the window is not just an addition to the scene, but a full-fledged element that shapes the emotional impact and sells the atmosphere of the interior. Don't ignore it, and your visualization will instantly look more professional. Another common mistake that beginners often overlook when modeling furniture or interior elements is incorrect construction joints. At first glance, it might seem like a small detail, but it's exactly these details that separate a professional, realistic 3D visualization from an unfinished one. One of the most frequent examples is when a baseboard runs directly into a cabinet door or furniture facade. In real life, this construction is impossible because the door wouldn't be able to open. It's physically blocked by the baseboard. This is immediately obvious to any client or designer who understands furniture ergonomics. The correct solution is to consider the opening logic and align the baseboard not with the door, but with a side panel or kitchen plinth. A side panel acts as a filler between the cabinet and the floor, while a plinth is part of the lower base of the cabinetry that doesn't interfere with moving elements. Another important point involves the placement of modern faucets, especially those with a lever handle that tilts backward. At first, this might seem like a small technicality, but it greatly affects the functionality and realism of the scene. If the faucet is placed too close to the wall, the lever simply won't be able to move properly. Its range of motion is restricted, and the user won't be able to adjust the water temperature or pressure fully. In real life, this type of faucet either wouldn't be installed at all or would be extremely uncomfortable to use. This is a typical example of how overlooking a small construction detail can make an entire scene feel poorly thought out. Always double check these elements before delivering your project to a client and pay attention to the details in your scenes. See you in the next video.